fishing, just fishing, fishing, just fishing. Chicken jerks, chicken jerks, chicken jerks, fish. Chicken jerks, chicken jerks, just fishing. Chicken jerks, chicken jerks, chicken jerks, fish. Chicken jerks, chicken jerks, just fishing. Chicken jerks, chicken jerks, chicken jerks. All right, here we go, guys. This is part two of the New York State opening day trip I did with my good friends Doc, John Sweeney, and Todd Mann of Long Island Lethals. Part one was uh, published this Saturday. Hopefully you saw it. If not, I'll have a link in the description. But yeah, we had a Long Island Sound three fish per man limit in half an hour ridiculous bite but we wanted to try some areas that we've never fished before and see if we can find blackfish there and both doc and i went on our navionics and we scouted locations in this area and we were looking for shallow areas where we could jig that held structure boulders reefs things like that something where blackfish would live and that's what you're looking for when you're looking for blackfish here's some screenshots of you know what we were looking for and we are going to fish all these areas and in the first instance as we are drifting over them you're going to see that yeah they're rocky and further we're going to see fish on these and todd is and todd is a master i i really suggest you subscribe to his channel long island lethals i have a link to it in the description of really discerning the difference in the types of fish that show up on the sonar uh, so he's telling us those are sea bass, these are blackfish, and I, I kid you not, that's what they were. He's pointing out that the sea bass are these yellow-looking uh, marks on the thing. They're not as dense, and the, the denser redder marks are blackfish. And it was true, uh, and it's something I never really thought about before, really telling the difference between these fish on the sonar. Um, so we're going to talk about that. We're going to show those areas we fish. We're also going to really discuss... Todd struggles with the jig. Now, Todd, I, I mentioned this in the first video, fantastic fisherman with the rig, does not do a lot of this jig fishing, does not do a lot of this light tackle jig fishing, especially he does use jigs when he's out deep. Um, and there's a big learning curve to this and rod selection is critical. And we are going to be fighting with Todd uh, to use one of these lighter rods that we bring along on the boat. Uh, so yeah, so that's what the video is about. Hope you guys enjoy. We're gonna start it off with the second spot we go to, the first spot only produce sea bass, and John Sweeney's going to hook into two consecutive keepers here. Sweeney's on. Ooh. No, it's, it's, oh yeah. Sweeney's on a, on a Sweeney Goliath here. No, no, it was the angle, I didn't have any, uh, it's decent, it's a keeper. Is it a keeper? It might be. All right. Yeah, I think it is. I heard drag. No, he's light. Nope. No, he looks okay. Dude, that's a keeper. Can I have a... Do you hook her? Yeah. Good job, buddy. Thanks. Oh, he, he inhaled it. Yeah, I know. Thanks. Just throw him in the bucket. Throw the, uh, throw the de-hooker in the bucket. That way it's between us if we need it. There's a couple of fish on the screen. Sweeney's got a good one. That's my fish you're looking at on the screen. Yeah, big one. Ooh. No, no, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm letting them because I don't oh. want to pull it 100%. Dude, that's definitely a keeper. That's five. Five, five for you. Todd, and Todd, what do you have? <laughs> Todd, uh, you know we're around. Todd, you'll have plenty of time to say the same thing to us when we're rig fishing. Oh, 
Oh, is that what it is? It's locked. Wow, there's there's 20 keepers caught. I don't know if that's luck. <laughs> I, I think if I it was two or three. I'm eight to zero. Oh, I wouldn't say luck at this point. <laughs> And we'll get back to Todd a little later in the video, but yeah, there, this certainly wasn't luck. Uh, and Sweeney's right. There was 20 fish on the boat at this point. And the critical difference between why the three of us, except Todd, have all the fish, the keepers at least, is because we were using these really light, sensitive tip rods and we're able to tell the difference between a fish worth setting on and one not worth setting on. And Todd is using really high-end, really good equipment but it's not meant for this ultralight style. It's just not. And he's going to realize it at the end, and hopefully we made a converter out of him. But in the first instance, it's just going to be, basically at this point, me and Sweeney catching the rest of the keepers. Because, uh... Ooh. Good one, right? Oh, he's got a good one. I see weight on that rod. But it's not, um... Good job, buddy. It's a 10? Yeah. Oh, dude, that's the big fish of the day. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. No, it's, not. it's barely a keep. It's a keep, but it's, it's, it's not a, barely a keeper, it's, dude. It's a big, heavy fish, but it ain't. It's a, baby it's a good fish. I can feel it. I had one before, bigger. You gotta go up. Get the boga. Look at the mouth. Yeah, yeah. It's a good fish. It's a big fish. Oh, that's not a and yeah, it wouldn't be a jigging jerks trip if we didn't have some mayhem between Doc and Sweeney. And yes, this is really happening. Doc is chasing Sweeney around the boat. I'm laughing as I'm watching this because Sweeney hid a female feminine hygiene product in Doc's bag. And Doc's cooler, actually. So yeah, that, that's what I got to put up with while trying to get us uh, safely from one spot to the next. Ooh. Yeah. Sweeney Goliath is on again. By the way, is that a rock right there? It is a I know. I, 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 see I, that shadow? I'm seeing it too. I don't know if it's the T top, maybe, because the sun is behind us. Uh, gonna be close, right? Yeah, he's yeah, gonna pass, Sweeney. Yeah. Oh, I got him in Yeah, I know. That's bad. But how many is that for you now? Uh, 11. Ugh. 11, 7, 18. You have what? 5? 23. And that 23 number includes all those fish we caught earlier in the day that was shown in my video a couple days ago. And hey, even more importantly than that, we finally convinced Todd Mann to try one of my VRC Jigging Jerks noodle tog rods. And yeah, here's his reaction on the first fish he hooks up. Oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a keeper! <laughs> yes, it is. Measure that one. That's definitely a keeper. Look at the mouth. Measure that one. I bet you it's a keeper. Yeah, Todd was right. That was just a hair short. He measured it uh, just under 16 inches. Back it went, but at least... He was going to focus on that rod the rest of the day, that much softer tip rod, really light, well-balanced setup that really lets you discern the difference between a fish just chipping away at the bait and really trying to swim away with the bait. And you're going to see an example, three examples, I believe, of this coming up right now. I'm going to go to the back of the boat. I'm going to set up on the transom and just look at the rod tip and look at how many of those hits I ignore and then you'll see my rod going down each time. And all that is, is me balancing the rod in my hand, waiting for that bigger fish to come in, pull the bait, and as a result, the rod tip starts going down. Boom, I set the hook.
yeah, this is a keeper. I don't want to say good in front of Todd. He's going to get pissed at me. Oh, it's not a 12 pounder. Todd. It's probably got about a six pounder on it. <laughs> yeah, that's all. It's probably lighter than that. Doc, watch it. Yeah, it's a good one. Oh, nice one too. Oh, Drag. He's gonna be one of those short, uh, beefy ones. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, he might. He might pass. Yeah, he's gonna pass. I mean, I feel the weight. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a keeper. Not bad. Doc, do you mind passing me that day hooker? Oh, come on. Wait, why did you go back up, <laughs> up there? I, I said for Todd to go there. I only left so Todd can go there. Todd needs a keeper. You're, oh my God. Listen, listen. You have five keepers today, a new personal best for you. And you don't let the guy who doesn't have a keeper fish back there. And yes, I was joking. Doc has had more than five keepers on a trip many times. Not a new personal best, just joking around. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't want him back there. I, I liked fishing back there because you had a really good angle to set the hook. Just the way the boat was uh, anchored with the Minn Kota spot lock, it just made it a lot easier to feel everything and to set the hook. We're going to get back uh, Todd back there, and I am going to show him with him standing next to me, exactly what I am looking and feeling for when I do this type of fishing. Let go. Just make sure you're down. Look, I just want you to look. You're not down. Hold on, Sweeney. Okay. You want to balance it. You you want to look look at your tip for a second. It's all taps taps. I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything. I want to wait with this balance for that rod tip to to shoot down like if it was a seesaw. Yeah. Okay, hold on. I'm ignoring all these hits. Yeah. Look, Ooh, the, no, I'm better. ignoring. Oh, there, that's a good one. Uh, there you go. I see what you're... Oh, wow. He's got rocks. All right. He's in a rock. <laughs> well, because we probably transferred it over. And yeah, in the two seconds it took me to pass Todd the rod, that fish took him into the rocks, but that's the point of this. Balance it in your hand, ignore the taps. When you feel that rod starting to swing down like a pendulum, you set the hook hard. Todd is going to finally pick it up, and it's going to be it's, he's going to be rewarded with a couple of nice fish. Here, look, Todd. You know, uh, it took a little. It took a little. Yeah, right in the big zipper. Todd? Get your hands on right Todd? What do you think? Uh, it should pass, right? Yeah. I think it passes. Oh, yeah. Definitely. 17. Yeah, about 17. I'll, I'll measure. Is that 10 or 12? 
So sometimes, Todd, when it's really calm and you're in like, sh sh you know, water with no current, you can actually see your line moving in the water. You can see it rippling through. When it's when the current's moving, it's harder to tell whether it's the current or a fish. There you go. Good hook set too. That might be good. No, I'm not convinced now. Oh, yeah, definitely. He did it. Our boy broke his cherry. No, he he put the fish in the engine. He got it. He got it. We can go home. Definitely a keeper. Nice job, buddy. Nice job. We better take a measure. No, he's good. I'll measure him if you want. He's definitely going to pass. Oh, he's good, dude. You don't really want to measure him, do you? No. Oh, okay. It's gonna sh Changing my battery. Todd said he's on a good fish. We've heard that before from him, though. Oh! Bring it here, let's see. Yeah, I think that's a keeper. Close. We'll give it a measure just for you, buddy. Got the ruler right here, the Sean Duffy ruler. Huh? Todd? 16 and a quarter. Oh. Yes. You add in the jigging world, the light jigging world, that is a mountable fish. That's close to a trophy. <laughs> and yeah, definitely a little self-deprecating humor there. Clearly, this style of fishing, this light tackle jig fishing in, in really bouldery areas where there are a ton of fish, it, it's not like going down to Maryland and trying to target a 15-pounder. And that's Todd's game, and he's great at it. And, yeah, I, I, I was just so happy that he finally picked up the very nuanced technique that's required to get these fish on these light jigs using these really ultralight setups. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Besides, you know hopefully semi-converting Todd into a light tackle jig fisherman. Uh, we, you know, we also showed that you can fish spots you've never fished before. Just look at your Navionics, look at the charts, look at the relief shading, find bouldery areas. If it's an area like here in Eastern Long Island where blackfish exist, chances are there are blackfish there. And the really good thing about this light tackle technique is it actually allows you to weed through the smaller fish, ignoring them, and really only setting when there's a better fish on the line. And that's something, in my opinion, it's a lot harder to do with a rig than with the light jig. As always, if you like these videos, hit that like button. If you're not already a subscriber and you like content like this, please consider subscribing. And if you're not already a member of the channel, please consider joining. Lots of perks associated with that, including early access to videos. And hey, since Joe Doran, longtime subscriber and now member of the channel uh, suggested in the last video that there was not enough buffoonery between us. Here's one last clip of Doc uh, that is just Doc. I, I don't know what else to say. Oh, come on. Are you kidding me? You know Wait, did I get that on film? No.